select somebody that would be willing to report back to the big group and we'll have about five minutes to go over what happened. And you can walk us through the thinking, the like core ideas. So for those that are um, viewing this on the live stream, we're doing report backs from the groups that were formed around some of the project ideas. And there was an instruction to kind of show us your flip chart or if you have a visual that you can share with the group that can help us follow your thinking or some of the content of what happened in your group. So I think I said, um, so basically the why, who, where, and what, or whatever else you want to get at. Who's going to go first? And the first group is... My hand was raised. All right. Uh, where's my group? I need the team. Um, what was our group? Um, performance... Well, it's such a big one. A performance slash practice slash process. So, wow. Everything. Um, I think what we kind of identified, and there's so much more, so please bear with us, um, on the why or our values, uh, it kind of revolves around equitable resource sharing processes, uh, cross-cultural or cross-pollination, holistic action-based practice, uh, and then an amplification of the themes and values through performance, something like that. Um, there was so much more. Uh, as far as the who, when it comes to the big, you know, dreamer landscape, it really is about uh, it serves humankind and also all other living creatures, interspecies, everybody who is concerned, a concerned creator. Um, and also the, what we're envisioning is really to serve, uh, I mean, to um, be created by art makers, art organizers, art trainers, the field in general. See, it's very general. Uh, for the where, um, there was a very strong sense from the group that, that accessibility is key. So virtual landscapes or everywhere, whatever that means. Um, it means everywhere. And, and then for the what, this is where I might need a little bit of help. It, it's, it's really about creating a framework and then there's a parenthesis and the, that could be a retreat, it could be a residency, it could be an event, a curriculum building um, act, you know, thing um, that for, con for concerned creators and with accessibility so that we can uh, reinforce those values. So it, it is very general, but there is this sense, I think, of, of, of having practice, performance, and process be in conversation with each other through this lens of, of, of equity and accessibility and cross-cultural was very, very, very strong. What do we have to bring to the table? Basically, this convening was like what came up here, but in like a mini way. Um, so that's kind of it. Victoria, is that correct? Mm, I don't know. Great. Oh, you're over there. Thank you. So we're going to have a chance to open it up for clarifying questions to the whole group, but let's go ahead and move through each of the groups first. Um, is, does that sound okay, that we can have, we'll save questions. Um, group, the second group, or the other group that wants to go next, anybody? Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm going to speak now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sorry. Um, so, I, please help me, people. Um, uh, oh, great. So we, uh, I'm going to share with you values that we listed and then uh, report on some, where the conversation went. Uh, we don't have a who, what, uh, yeah. Um, values, uh, dismantling capitalism, kinesthetic awareness, justice, many times, equity, many times, inclusion, many times. Um, centering, uh, opening epistemologies, um, particularly the epistemologies of the South, the global South, 
counter hegemony, disruption of resources, or sorry, disruption of resources structure, uh, reimagining caring, empathy, uh, radical care of self slash community. Um, so we were talking and it felt kind of maybe uh, false or too much for us to think of a, a concrete program or activity within our group. Um, and so we, we then talked about what we might do together instead. And um, so a lot of ideas came out of that. I don't think anything was super settled on, but I'll just share what came out of that conversation. Uh, one being that we each have access to different spaces in the world and privilege of different kinds. And so how do we bring these values into those spaces um, is something we can help each other think about. Uh, another th idea is the uh, just creating some kind of set of principles, practices, or structures which uh, does already exist in the world, as we talked about in many of our own practices. And so maybe instead of creating something new here as a group, um, looking at each of our own practices and seeing how they might speak to each other, or, how, or just making it, creating some things uh, and understanding some structures like that that we can then bring into the spaces that we have access to um, and use the privilege that we have to, um, yeah, I don't know, make things happen. And I'm wondering if I'm missing anything. Oh, cool. I'm gonna add oh, something. I, there was um, a big piece of paper that said embodied practice for our group, and so it wasn't about a project that represented that, but I, what I heard spoken was that w there are methodologies to get people into their bodies and using their kinesthetic awareness that can recenter um, an understanding of just about anything. So that was um, offered up as, a, as kind of a how, like a methodology that could be applied to lots of different kinds of projects. Oh, and sorry, can I add one thing, which is that I did, in the group, I brought up an example, and I think others brought up examples too, of just literal ways that money is taken and redistributed to people. And so um, I think that's something that was talked about as well. <laughs> Is there anybody else that wants to add from that gathering of folks? Okay. There was, um, we went around, thank you, April, because we went around and April asked about disruptive times or disruptive uh, interventions that and and people told stories and I think from those stories a lot of our like baseline for how we could talk to each other came from that what disruption meant so that was helpful because it because just like the idea of radical the idea of disruption was also context specific let's put it that way okay the other the last group that hasn't spoken or shared Are just going to read the big board? <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I think that um, all of us agreed that there was a need for a space that's both embodied and virtual um, for the many kinds of theaters to be able to come together to discuss um, various best practices, approaches, actions, uh, uh, activism, um, education, um, but basically being able to meet anyone, anywhere they are uh, in the theater world, um, help them connect them to ecology and changing systems, and that of course includes social justice, environmental justice. Um, but there, so there's many different ways. You can read about <laughs> it later. And also in, in partnership with others. So it might be um, scientists, policy makers, but it would be a way to convene and connect with other um, stakeholders and also think critically about communication with audiences and building 
audiences and communities? I think we agreed our core goal is to save the fucking planet. <laughs> so stay tuned. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And save it already. <laughs> um, we we was talking about a center that was was dedicated to fostering the kinds of imaginations that are going to be needed in the future um, because of the uh, unfolding climate realities. So a focus on Im imagination, new imaginations, which uh, therefore meant a focus on storytelling. Uh, actions, um, uh, new kinds of work, and, and many partnerships. And um, speaking of fucking saving the planet, uh, we don't want theater to be a one night stand, right? So the idea would be that through the work that we create, we created a mechanism to continue engaging the audiences to do more than just, uh, not that this happens, but just passively watch, but actually go and act. So part of the idea here is that at the end of the day, we actually have faith in humanity and that the people in the audience actually care and that we may need to push them, right, to care, but that they do care, that we can strip them of whatever insecurity they have they can become protagonists for change, and we can provide them with the inspiration and the tools to effectuate change. Um, when the, we spent a lot of the conversation actually talking about whether there should be something that was sort of uh, across the arts. Um, Marta, Marta is not here. Oh, hi, Marta. Um, and the, and we, I think we sort of collectively landed on uh, the fact, or what we believe is a fact, um, that there is no pre-existing center that looks at theater and the environment. There are general humanities programs and there are other kinds of disciplines connecting with the environments, but so we decided to make it very much focused on theater. And performance, sorry, theater performance and all those things. Is there a second mic floating, floating around the room? So this is a time for us to open um, these ideas up for clarifying questions. Is there any um, questions that came up? Um, for the last group, um, I just have a question, because yesterday when we were talking, I mean, I appreciate the sentiment of Save the Fucking Planet, but when we were talking about the long arc of of the planet, the planet will be fine, in my opinion. Um, it's, it's humanity that is at crisis. And so I'm just wondering, is your frame the environmentalist frame, or is it beyond that? Uh, I'll speak for me. I think I want to make a better human being because I'm focused on the today, right? So the, the idea is the people who are going to um, experience the art form and participate are the target. So it's about making a better, more engaged, more science literate, more open-hearted human being. Uh, for me, it's, a, it's like, a, uh, and a lot of people in the group also um, had these sentiments of um, asking the question, how can theater performance, dramatic storytelling help this transitioning from a people and other species harming systems that we are embedded in to non-harming systems. And I mean, even though, you know, the planet, it, how it will be okay, we're losing so many species right now, you know, it's not okay right now. So yeah, I mean, it's resilient, but let's, let's reduce the harm of the human civilization so that we can all live in harmony. And how can theater and storytelling help with that transition? Helps everybody. And just to add to that, I think um, as, a, as a humanist practice, I think theater can generate a lot of momentum through doubt. And I, I, Chantal's question from yesterday has really been echoing in my head the question of how personally invested am I in the continuation of the human species? And I think that question might animate some of the work that we do. 
Are there any other questions for clarification or things that came up as these ideas were being described? This is a nerdy thing um, from astrophysicists I know who say that, in fact, the planet might not be okay as we know it, and that Venus may have had a, a climate much like Earth's at one point. Um, so I just want to just give it a bigger frame even than that. But I totally hear you about the, the humans and the, and, and the sentient beings in this conversation. I actually want to say that I do care passionately about human beings, and I do think that um, um, that is um, that is the focus. I think at the end of the day, I mean, I want uh, human beings not to suffer, and I want human beings to uh, love. I, th I think that that's our duty. I think things beyond that are beyond the scope of of who we are. We as human beings will impact other life forms through our molecules, but. Today, we, we sit on this planet, and it's our role to, to be better today. So there's a, a sense of being in the present, and uh, that's a really important role. And by being better human beings, we help um, all the other beings we co-evolved with and share life with. But I do think we have to stay in the present. It seemed like a groups one, group one and group three were really overlapping in their intentions. And uh, I'm wondering where those groups diverge, if, if anywhere. Are they two separate groups, or are they the same? Do they have the same intentions? One seemed to be more focused on making projects, making a work. And the, maybe the third group was more on creating a, a place for people to go for resources and or information about making work, or I'm not sure if there's a distinction. So I'll, I'll try to maybe reframe what Georgina said, and I'm probably gonna do violence to what we talked about, so, so correct me if I, but I think um, we also talked about our effort, our project, the what, and as Georgina said, we didn't arrive at a what. It's kind of a, it's sort of a collection of what's, maybe. Which is to create sort of an expanding cohort within the theatrical community whose uh, focus is um, infused, or, or who at least, whose work is infused with um, bringing these issues into, ultimately, into the performances. Uh, and therefore, of course, bringing them into the public consciousness in a much more, in, in a much uh, uh, more comprehensive way. And so, for example, we're not talking about creating performances about climate change or about species, uh, the sixth great extinction. But performances that are performances that are already, you know, stories that are already told, but are maybe set in conditions in which the backdrop is, um, even incidentally, you see that, um, oh, this is a society in which these things are different. This notion of de-radicalizing the radical. You sit and you see there's this whole society that um, uh, there's no personal public, there's no personal transportation. It's all done in a different way. Or their diet is vegan, let's say. But that's not the focus of the performance. It's just something that it is in the story that's happening. So that's one example of, but having that sort of thing happen on a much broader scale so that these notions get infused into our consciousness, these notions that are the notions of solution. Um, in a much more sort of pervasive way. And the, I think the, what we were, the what that we are ultimately maybe arriving at is a framework for creating this cohort, this expanding cohort within the theatrical community that's doing that more often, that's actively, uh, intentionally doing that. Is that. Yeah, so that could be a residency, that could be a curriculum, it's probably all of it. It's a residency, it's a curriculum, it's a, uh, which includes virtual pieces, um, 
its workshops, uh, uh, all of that framework. Real name, what Rob is talking about, thank you, was that in our group, by the end, we came to, well, this convening, like, this is the what. And so this framework is to, like, um, make possible the pathways out of this convening, because we came in with these values that we, again, codified in our last hour, um, and so how to, like, play them out again and even further. So I just wanted to make a comment, I guess, about who who it is that we're trying to serve or how it is or where. I forgot the questions. But what, what I, my point is, is I think we really have to think of our audience and maybe when it comes to theater um, and climate change. Um, so I, again, thinking from a public health standpoint, is Maslow's hierarchy, hierarchy of needs and the very first one is physiological needs. So if they have food or water or housing, and I think it's really important that when we're talking about, we feel like people don't uh, have the same values or the same urgency, we need to address it. And maybe that happens in theater where we play out a series of you know, the, the physiological needs, the food, the like, really necessity needs, um, then the next one is uh, safety, right? So we need to feel safe, and I think we can all agree that we don't feel safe everywhere. And then the next one is um, belonging and, and, and need for love. And then the next one is esteem. So we need to feel like we're accomplishing something, and I think we all are getting frustrated today because we're like, well, what are we accomplishing? You know, we, we just, every, everything's mixing up. It's all one. Um, but I think... Maybe going back to the very beginning and thinking of what communities you actually want to meet. Because if it's all of us, we're really privileged. We've heard that a bunch of times. So maybe we don't need to start right at the physiological needs, but maybe we go to esteem <laughs> right away and jump straight to the top. Because I think before we can get everybody involved with self-actualization, which is the top, where um, relationships, relevance, and responsibility come into play, we still need to make sure that we're meeting those other levels. And so it does go back to who our audience is. Um, I wanted, oh, I'm sorry. You're great, go ahead. Um, so we're gonna have an opportunity to um, ask about reorganizing ourselves, but I'd love you to close out if you have another comment. Sure, um, it's not a great closing out comment. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, all, all I wanted to say was that in response to the third group, um, is that something that came up in our conversations about how we were going to share what we were talking about is someone in our group was like, oh, but what we want to do here as a group is something that I already do. I have the structures for this. I have, I created the, you know, and then we were like, that's great. How can we draw on that? And so I want to just point out to the group that's speaking that this work, this uh, place, this type of uh, thing that you're imagining is something that I know personally I in my own work and me and my organization's work has been striving to do for years, and I know that's true for others in this room as well, um, other people who have organizations and um, practices that, do, that want to do this. I mean, like, quite literally our mission is to unite theater and ecology to enact justice, cultivate hope, and inspire a thriving future. And I know that's true for, uh, and I'm not saying that to say, this is my thing. I just mean that there's so much to draw on, and the thing that's exciting about that is that this is people who have an incredibly, incredibly similar interest and desire um, and look at all the capacity we have now. It's, 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 it's eight times the capacity I have as a human, you know, as one person. So I think that's um, just to think about what we can draw on as we build these action plans. to recognize the amount of uh, work that's already going on of, this, of the kind that's informed and infused with these, uh, this conscious, uh, ecospheric consciousness and uh, to, to give it a home. Yeah, yeah and, a, and a platform to share your work and, and these best practices with others and then inroads for people just beginning or enriching 
materials that others can, who are really deeply engaged with this, can learn from. So thank you, because it, it must not have really, we must not have course, yeah. expressed exactly, I think we're a platform, and I hope all three of the groups are working together. I feel that we wouldn't be able to work without the sort of radical ideas um, and placement that you're talking about. And maybe just a, uh Close on that from us. I forgot the one word that, thank you, Georgina. <laughs> it took a lot of wrangling. We came to this word, which is absolutely we recognize that, as, as Julie just said, this convening is an embodiment of, of what we're talking about. The notion is to then take those tools that have been developed and are being used by people and organizations like yours um, and amplify them greatly. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to take a 15 minute break and then we're going to come back and discuss how to reorganize or to intensify what we've identified as possible avenues.